Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to use Git and GitHub. So first of all, a huge mistake people make is they use built-in clients in their IDE like eGit or NetBeans Git. But that's not good because you are stuck with your IDE. If you have to code in a language that your IDE doesn't support, you're going to be stuck with not having those tools and you're going to have to learn a completely different environment. So instead, you should get, um, for Windows, Git and TortoiseGit. Um, yeah, TortoiseGit is only for Windows. So um, you're going to want to go to this gitscm.com and download it for Windows. Um, you're going to want to get this Git 1.7.9 preview. Um, yeah, that will install Git for you. Just go with all the defaults. And the second thing you want to get, TortoiseGit is over here, Torskit. Um, go to Downloads and install the one for your system, 64, 32-bit. And again, go with all the defaults. So I like these Git clients because they're they're very, very easy to use. So now, you're going to want to generate this thing called a putty key, which will basically connect you, you with GitHub without having to type in passwords or anything. So yeah, it's basically like a password file. Um, so when you have installed TortoiseGit, it should come up with this program called PuttyGen. So go and find that and click on it. I don't know, I have so many. And you're going to want to click this Generate button. So just move your mouse over the blank area like this. Now, this is going to be called your public key, which is what GitHub needs. So let's go to GitHub. Ah. Okay, so github.com. I'm assuming you've already registered in GitHub. So go to this account settings link in the top right, and you're going to want to click on SSH keys and add SSH key. Now, title, call your title of your SSH key, whatever you're going to store in your system. So I'm going to call mine my SSH key. And now take this, copy it okay and paste it over here so github will now have your key you need to copy all of this okay now click add key um, now confirm your password it's a pretty recent thing they added because some people were doing some stuff okay so yeah now your ssh key is there and it will send you an email because some guy hacked this thing a few months ago so now they're more secure. Now you're going to want to click Save Private Key. Um, yes. So, if someone else gets this file, they're going to be able to take your account. So if you want to put a passphrase, you can put it in here. But I don't usually use that because no one else sees my files. So, let's call it, what do we call it here? My SSH key. My SSH key. This this name doesn't matter, but it's good to line them up so you know what goes with what. So now you have this SSH key file .ppk made. Now you're going to want to make a repository for your code. Okay, so hmm, I'm going to go and make a new folder for my code, even though I have a one already. Code, okay, and I'm just going to make an example project with one file in it my project okay and let's add a new text file hi.txt and let's add in a few bytes okay um if uh yeah. okay so now you're going to want to click on git create repository here okay and this will create a git repository that you can commit to now, committing basically means putting your code into the repository. And Git is uh, something called a DVCS, meaning that your repository is, you have a complete copy of the repository, all of its history, on your system and anywhere else this Git repository is. It's stored in this .git folder here. So, to commit means we're adding code into its history. So, let's make a commit. called initial commit okay now keep this window open don't close it okay if you did close it 
Uh, you know, I'll just show you if you closed it. Um, I'm going to want to click a new repository in GitHub where you saw it. Cop, whatever. Description. This was going to be the description in the bottom thingy. This is my project. Homepage URL. You know, whatever. These are both optional fields, so. Okay. So now it's going to come up with this thing. Now, I'm not teaching you this command line git stuff, and this is also mainly for Linux. It works on Windows, but... Um, so you're going to see this git remote add origin, blah blah blah. You're going to want to copy all of this. So control C. And go to... Right click on your folder, click to... or move your mouse on tortoise kit. Push. Okay? Now it's going to come up with this dialog, which is going to get your code onto the thing. So click manage over there. Um, gonna want to add in this git at github URL here. Call the remote origin. See, git remote add origin. Origin is just a naming convention. It's the origin of your code. And putty key, you're gonna want to browse for it. I don't know where I put it. Oh, yeah. Uh, my ssh key dot ppk. Click add new. Okay, now it's gonna add this origin thing. Now you can click OK. OK. Now it's pushing it to your repository. So you're going to want to wait for that, wait for the tortoise. Good. And now you're going to have your code over here. C, ASD, ASD, whatever. So that's about it. Now, a lot of people have problems with um, Git not found or something like that. You want to click on the settings thing over here. And here, msysgit, git.exe path. So this is going to be the path to your git that's going to be the folder it's located in so mine's located in C program files git um, yours might be located somewhere else but make sure you configure that if you're getting that error mine automatically did it but sometimes it doesn't so yeah that's basically how you work with github and tortoise git thanks for watching bye